Good day, ZKD here. Day one of Prophecy is down, and I've put about 18 hours into it already, having a really, really good time. And I wanted to make a quick guide for you guys on how the prophecies work, and also some tips from when you should seek your prophecies and when you should seal your prophecies. So, first up is how the prophecies actually work, just like a very basic rundown. As you kill monsters in zones, you will occasionally get a silver coin as a drop. Now this drops on average of one per zone, so you're more you're most likely to see one per zone. Now there's not any benefit to full clearing zones to try and get these, it's still random. So you can see multiple in zone, people have seen upwards of five five to seven per zone. I think I heard someone say they found seven in a zone. And uh, sometimes you'll find like two in rapid succession and you'll go a couple zones without finding any. So it's pretty random. If you're generally just progressing and clearing fast, then you will get silver coins. You know, if you're killing large amounts of monsters, you will get silver coins. As far as I can tell, there doesn't seem to be any benefit to like running City of Sun to get these yet, but that'll require some more testing to see if there's any like tricky ways to farm silver coins. Now once you get a silver coin, you can turn these into Navali, she is available in all of the town instances, and one silver coin will buy you one prophecy. Now, some confusion about the prophecies, and a lot of confusion is stemming from this idea that these prophecies are quests. That they are missions or quests with a set reward. But that's not actually the case. The prophecies are simply a thing that will happen to you. So it's it's a prediction of a thing that's going to happen. And uh, sometimes it's something that you can seek out, and sometimes it's something that's just going to happen if you just keep playing. Now, the very nature of this is just a thing that's going to happen to you is that there's not necessarily always a reward. Some of the categories of prophecies are, are a thing that is, its, it's, award, its reward is implicit to the encounter. So for example, a, uh, a zone modification encounter, which is a category of encounter, is something that could, you know, make the zone full of tempests. And you know, there's no extra reward to doing that prophecy, to fulfilling that prophecy. It is just the fact that it will be a tempest zone. Another example is that a zone will be full of sea witches. It's just extra mobs to kill. There's no additional reward there. You don't come back to town after you fulfill a prophecy and talk to Navali. She's not going to give you a reward. She's just telling your future. She's just saying the stuff that's going to happen to you. Now this system is very engaging and very interesting, but again, it's not like a quest system, so it might not be the kind of like reward style that you're used to. A lot of the prophecies are just things that are going to happen. Some of them even in fact are not actually very good in the sense that they're not a reward for you. Some of them are actually just a challenge. Like for example, I got one that was you will encounter a zone full of powerful devourers and there was many, many, many rare devourers in the zone. Now that wasn't necessarily very rewarding. That was mostly a challenge. So not all prophecies are necessarily good. Now, there are a couple of different categories. So I've already mentioned zone modification encounters. So these ones where it will change a way a zone works. So a zone will have a tempest or it will be full of sea witches or something like that. Another type of encounter or prophecy that you can have is a unique boss prophecy. Usually they'll be in set locations. Like for example, one that I got was uh, over here in the battlefront on the bridge. I fought a lightning golem boss elemental thing. Now there wasn't any extra reward to killing that, to fulfilling that prophecy, but going and encountering that and killing it fulfilled the prophecy. It got it out of my prophecy menu, which is important as I'll talk about in a minute. And it, uh, I mean, the boss dropped some loot and gave me some XP, just like any other boss would. It was just a unique monster encounter. Now another one is a hunt with a actual specific reward. Now these ones can be very rewarding. And one that I actually got was to hunt down a rare galvanic ribbon that gave me a wind ripper. So I got a wind ripper in my first day as a result of one of these prophecies. Here's an example. Wait, I think I might have an example of one of these at the moment. I don't actually have any of these active at the moment, but we'll turn in some prophecies and we'll take a look at those. So let's talk a bit more about these hunt with reward ones because these have been causing some confusion. It will be such a thing as an example I got, which got me a drill neck as a reward, was uh, hunt down an ancient archer. It was an, that was basically the description. Hunt down an ancient archer and you'll be rewarded with a unique item. So there's a guaranteed unique for hunting down a powerful ancient archer. So the word there, the keyword there was powerful. Now ancient archer is the description of the mob and you kind of have to puzzle that out a bit. You have to think about, okay, what's a, what's an ancient archer? Sometimes it'll describe the mob base type. So you can go to the wiki and type in the mob base type and then find out where they are. Like if, for example, it's it's a drowned undead. I looked for drowned on, on the wiki and found the drowned zombies and the locations they spawn in like the fetid pools and stuff like that so you can hunt them down that way and find out where they are 
Now, to ter determine what type of that base mob that you find, for example, Ancient Archer was a, uh, a, a skeletal archer, so I just simply went to ledge to find that. But to determine what like category of that you need to kill, it will say something before it, like powerful or very powerful. Now, powerful means it's going to be a rare version of that. So you just have to run the zones that spawn those mob types until you encounter a rare version of that mob. So for example, a powerful ancient archer would be a rare skeletal archer. Now the skeletal archers spawn in ledge and you might have to just kind of run a couple of re uh, ledge zones until you actually run into a rare uh, skeletal archer and then you kill that and then you get the unique from it. It drops that unique. So you, I don't think you actually get a quest notification on the right hand side of the screen. A lot of prophecies give you a quest notification. This one you just simply, the next rare of that base type that you kill will give you that one. So that's powerful. Now another one is very powerful. If it says, if a hunt prophecy with a reward tells you to hunt down a very powerful and then monster type description, very powerful equals unique or boss. So if it says something like a very powerful uh, bearded goat or bearded devil or something like that, then that's talking about a unique goatman and that would be in the zone after the prison, right? There's a, there's a unique goatman in there. So you need to kind of puzzle those things together. So there's definitely a reward of game knowledge and some referral to the wiki will help you hunt these ones down. And as I said, some of them can be very rewarding. I got a, rin, a wind ripper from one of these for hunting down a rare galvanic ribbon. And that was not a particularly hard prophecy to fulfill. I think I just got lucky in getting that one in the first place. Now the next category of prophecies is crafting prophecies. So these are ones that it will say the next time you do some form of crafting, this will happen instead, or you'll get some extra benefit. So an example is there is one that makes a transmute give you an extra affix. Using that, I was able to do things like this ring just here. I used a transmute on this and the transmute rolled two affixes, which would have been the life, life and dexterity, for example, and then it added an extra property to it, which actually turned it into a rare. So I used a transmute to turn a white into a rare and that gave me the dexterity and then I mastercrafted lightning res. So that's an example of crafting one. There's other ones like the next jeweler's orb you use on a five linkable item becomes five linked. So there's some pretty nice one. There's even one for a six link as well. So uh, those are just crafting prophecies. The next one are Prophecy Chains. Now these will appear with a name with a one at the end of them when you first encounter them. Now the Prophecy Chains are all different and the way they work kind of depends on the Prophecy Chain. I need to explore these out a little bit more. Some of them only appear in earlier difficulties, like there's a Nemesis one that you encounter a uh, an Exile in Normal, Cruel, Merciless, and then Endgame Maps. So that's a prophecy chain that occurs in each of those different locations, but some of them just appear, you just need to do the first one, then you can do the second one. So the way this happens is you'll you'll get a, the first, the starter prophecy of a prophecy chain. So it'll be something, 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 one. And you'll complete that, you'll do whatever it says to do. It says in the actual white text there, which explains generally what you have to do, or gives you some sort of hint towards what you have to do. So you go, you go do that encounter, and once you complete that prophecy, that prophecy will just leave your page, and you'll be like, okay. So you'll just keep turning in, and eventually another silver coin will give you the prophecy two, the second prophecy of that. Now, as I said, there may be some extra hidden criteria for that that we have to explore, but basically, as you eat, do each one of those, try and complete those, and then you have a chance of getting the next prophecy in the chain until you complete the prophecy chain. And each of the prophecy uh, chain steps you know, becomes more difficult and potentially more rewarding. And I've heard some of the later Prophecy Chain steps are very rewarding, such as giving you certain unique strong boxes, uh, unique drops and things like that. Now the next one is Fated Uniques. This is the next category. This is one where it will say, kill so-and-so while using a so-and-such item. So it might be kill Calm while using a Lion Eyes item. So it simply have to equip one of those uniques that is described and then go kill Calm and then you'll get some sort of um, you'll get some sort of uh, extra reward for that. Now there's another type of one, the unique upgrades one, which you guys may have seen in the earlier videos I did and you may have seen in some of the teasers. Uh, you can do things like upgrade Death's Harp into Death's Opus by e equipping that item and killing a certain boss with it and then that item will evolve into a more powerful version. So that's kind of like the fated uniques there. And then there are these, uh, there are kind of these other encounters, which I don't really know what category to put these in, but these are just extra little things that are gonna happen to you. This is stuff like when you, you'll kill a monster that will drop a bunch of currency. So pretty simple stuff. Those are just ones that you just keep playing until they happen. There's nothing specific that you can do for them. You just have them active. So now that I've got like the type of prophecies out and how they work, 
Let's turn in some prophecies and I'll talk about when you should be turning in prophecies and when you should be sealing. So this is what happens here. Once you get one of those silver coins, you click Seek Prophecy. In a maze of green, she'll do her spiel. Sets a trap baited with treasures. Now you'll notice this is actually one of the prophecy chains that I mentioned. I've done three of the Plague More prophecy chains and I just randomly got the fourth one there. So it sounds like you'll be ambushed by Plague More's followers in the Hedge Maze. So this one's pretty simple. I just telling me to go to Hedge Maze. I go to Hedge Maze and somewhere in that zone I'll encounter Plague More's followers. Now an important point for this is once you enter that zone, if it is activated, now you have to create the zone yourself and sometimes they don't activate so you might have to create the zone a couple times until it happens you'll get a quest on the right hand side of the screen. If the purple text appears on the right hand side of the screen, don't leave that zone until you complete that prophecy or you will lose the prophecy. I believe you can get it again later by turning in another silver coin, but you don't really want to have to do that. You don't want to have to wait. So turn those in, uh, complete those prophecies once you enter the zone and see the purple text on the right hand side. Make sure you have quest tracking enabled. Usually you turn this off, right? <laughs> Quest tracking over here, enable quest tracking. Most experienced players turn this off. In Prophecy, actually pretty handy to have it active, so not a bad idea at all. Let's turn in another one. The Whisperer leaves a tome in the tower, held by a maddened follower. Unbearable whispers, whispers too, so this is another chain prophecy, the second one there. You'll discover a tome upon slaying a monster in the Scepter of God. So another pretty simple one, go to Scepter of God, kill monsters until you slay one that will give you a tome of some description. So, let's talk about when you want to turn in prophecies and when you want to seal them and what sealing does as well. Now, here's here's what I think, guys. If you're just starting out your first character in prophecy, don't be afraid to use your silver coins while you're leveling. There are a lot of really cool leveling ones, a lot of, you know, cool leveling uniques to get, a lot of extra currency to do, and a lot of interesting encounters to do while leveling. This has been designed with a lot of the early game gameplay in mind. So a lot of people have been asking me, should I sell my silver coins for Merciless? And sure, there are some pretty rewarding things, prophecies to do in Merciless, but don't deprive yourself of the prophecy experience. There's a lot of cool stuff to encounter in the Prophecy League in the earlier parts of the game. And as I mentioned, some of these quest chains, some of these prophecy chains, actually only occur in earlier difficulties. So there is actually some advantage to using your coins in earlier difficulties. However, I do recommend once you get to Act 4 of whatever difficulty you're in, so if you're in Normal, for example, once you get to Act 4, stop turning in silver coins. Maybe do a few for the start of Act 4, but then stop doing them and try and work down the rest of your prophecies before you move on to the next difficulty. Because prophecies are actually difficulty locked. Now, I had to seal one of these prophecies that I wasn't, you know, I wasn't really able to go complete here because it was something that, um... can only be completed in Cruel Difficulty, right? So this was a rare monster that with Inner Treasure will drop two uniques instead of one. Pretty nice prophecy, but only completable in Cruel. Not really worth my time farming Cruel, so it would have been better if I had not turned this in. You know, this one was difficult because it was going to, you know, be a random thing that may just never happen, so... That one was difficult, but if you're in Act 4 and you turn a bunch of prophecies in and then you go into the next difficulty, then you actually have to go back to the earlier difficulty to complete those prophecies. So try and wind down all your prophecies for the current difficulty before you move on to the next difficulty so you don't have to spend time in an earlier difficulty. Otherwise, I think it's a really good idea to try and have all of your seven prophecies active at once. There's no advantage to leaving an empty prophecy slot, keep them all going and try and complete them as, you know, the more you have going, the more chances you have to run into things and complete more prophecies, the higher turnover you have. And as you're like farming pretty fast, you'll be actually stacking up those silver coins pretty fast. So any prophecies that you can't complete or don't want to complete, then you can seal to get rid of them. So if they're ones that are, you know, gonna be a real pain in the ass, take a lot of time, then it may just be worth sealing them. Now the way sealing works is you click the seal button here and you get this option to seal one of these prophecies. Now this costs a chunk of silver coins. Early difficulties, it's like three to six. Later difficulties, some of them are pretty expensive. So you really wanna try and do these prophecies wherever possible to save those silver coins but if they're going to be a real pain in the ass you may want to seal them just simply to get rid of them because if this is full and then you can't turn any more prophecies right and if something's just sitting there is occupying a valuable space that could be used for other prophecies now the other reason you might seal a prophecy is something that is very good or very valuable that you want to make some real currency from so you can seal it and then sell it to other players it also may be something that's very good but it's not good for you it'd be better for another player to do in which case you might want to seal that. There may also be some advantage to sealing certain steps in prophecy chains and selling those for people that are having trouble or want to complete them quicker. And uh, and then you can you know wait until you get your uh, wait until you get that prophecy chain again, potentially seal it again or do it for yourself. So let's fill up my prophecy tree here. They flee from the eyes of Oria, coated in gold from head to toe. This one's a really nice one, I've got this one before. You'll slay rogue exile and all the items they drop are rare. You get a lot of rare items that way. Let's seek out the final one. 
A fearsome foe's inner torment spills out into the world. This is one of those other encounter categories I was talking about. You'll just kill something and something will happen. So this will be, I'll kill an enemy and a tormented spirit will fly out of the enemy and into another enemy. So a nice little benefit. As I said, these are these ones like this, Wealthy Exile, Ending the Torment. These are a good reason to just have all your prophecies running at once because the more of these you have, the more of these things you're encountering, the more XP, loot, and money you're getting. So good stuff. So guys, hopefully that answers some of your questions about prophecy from some of the things that I've discovered. I've spent a, quite a bit of time interacting with the prophecies. They're very engaging and very entertaining. Really liking this league so far. If you have any further questions or things that you've discovered about prophecy, feel free to leave them in the comments below. That is it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.